Okay, today we are going to deal with the data communication. Basically, the first, our first topic will be deal with the introduction to data communication. And what we want to entail here is basically that there is no organization which knows to do what communication or transfer of what data. So that's why it basically is very important for us to understand what happens in data communication. Because the, 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 the interesting part of it, data and communication are two words. So data, the definition of data is, means that those are raw facts which are supposed to be done what? Which are supposed to be either encoded or put in a format which uh, the receiver can understand. And the communication is the process of transferring the information from the source up to the destination. Sometimes we can refer uh, the source as the sender or the transmitter and also the receiver uh, basically is the recipient. Now, the two words, the data communication, the entire process of transferring data from the source up to the destination is what we refer as what? Data communication. In simple terms, it means that if I have data to send, basically maybe there's, there's things like any coding, data can pass through the DTE, data time and equipment, through the DC like a modem, then we transfer it, we convert to a, a format which for trans, like now, I, maybe I'm using fiber. Another person is using what's called electromagnetic waves for transfer. Another one maybe is using a, a cables like a coax or cables or anything. So the, the, the entire process of transferring this information or data from the source up to the destination is what we term as data communication. So information basically, the difference between data and information is information is the processed, already processed word data or the facts which had been put in a format that the recipient can able to understand and receive. So there are some terms which we use in under data communication. The first term is DTE and then we have DCE. So in full data, this means data terminal equipment and then this one is data communication also equipment so where I want to define these two and then we can uh, cite an example in each like now a DTE a data time equipment is anything which is able to transfer or is able to generate data or can receive data like now a mobile a printer, a computer, we can term them as what a data terminal because it can be the source of data or the destination of data. Then a data communication equipment, it is anything which can change data into a format either for transferring or into a format which can be able to be received at the receiver side. Like now things like a modem. Because a modem will change either from analog to digital or from, and the is faster from digital to analog. We change from analog to digital when we want to transfer to zeros and when we talk about the digital, it means zeros and ones. So that now they are, they, are, they are able to be interpreted by what? A digital system. Then at the receiver side, we can convert back them to the format which they were before. So basically in most uh, data communication processes, we shall be getting these what? Two terms, data time and equipment, data communication equipment. And then under that one, we have what we call a transmission modes. The transmission modes. And there are three of them. So one, we have the half duplex. Then we have a four duplex. And then there is the third one, which you call the symbolex. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between these, uh, these three? We start with the simpler one. The first one is what they call the symbolex. A symbolex refers to one-way communication. It means that the data goes only one way. There is no return path or there is no, uh, somebody cannot get what, uh, an information or uh, an answer on what he has or a response from what he has transmitted. So if we have a DT, two DTEs here, the first DTE is here, you can call it one, data terminal A, and we have data terminal B here, data terminal uh, B, sometimes we call them stations. So it is, it is one way, so we show that it is only one way. The arrow indicates that it is unidirectional. 
I'm going to use that word, the unidirectional or one-way communication. It is, uh, it is a uh, it's measure is being used where we don't require a, an acknowledgement or a response from the receiver. Things like where they are giving orders, like now military operations, there's a radio call from somewhere to the various units. So we can just use what? Symbolex because it can go to all other places other than the source. Then number two, we have half duplex. Half duplex means, as the name is uh, suggesting, the half, double, it means is two way, yes, but alternate. So it means one person will talk, then it will maybe say over, so that they can, uh, you can on over there, the other side to do what? To communicate. So if this is a diagram, basically, we can say this, this one, the first DT. So we have a station here, or a, a DTA. Then we have DTB. So from there, this is a return, this is with, so once, if DTA sends uh, information here, this one will be resending the time, the DTA will be transmitting the signals. Then it will wait for some time. Once, once the DTA or the station has said over, then it can give a response or it can communicate back. So it is two way, but alternate. So we can say two way, let me put the arrow there. Two way alternate communication. So if you have, for example, where people like now, the police, they, 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 they communicate, then I, one of them says over, which means I finished what I was doing, you can in, uh, uh, respond or you can communicate. We use what we call half duplex. The third one is what we call the full duplex. I want to draw it here, basically here now. Full duplex. It is two-way simultaneous, two-way simultaneous communication. Two ways, it means I have a terminal here, a data terminal here. I have another terminal far somewhere, some place. It can be nearer or it can be far away. This one you can just draw this way. So we have the first DTE, then we have the second DTE. So this is two way, simultaneous communication, two way. Simultaneous communication. It implies what? That each of the two has, uh, has powers to communicate or to cut the other one, and then it can respond. So they communicate, like now in our mobile communication, we use what? Full duplex. I can say that in most organizations, we, uh, we use what? Full duplex communication since. When the other one is talking, the other one can cut him or her, then he can do what it can, he can respond. Now, in data communication, again, before we go far, we know that like now this new technology has come in to enhance communication. We can have wireless communication. Sometimes we call it unguided. And then we have wired or guided media. Basically, we are, we, I'm trying to introduce what we, we shall be covering. Like now, when we, are, we, are, we shall go deeper, here now under this wireless and uh, uh, wired, we shall be talking about transmission what? Media. So basically, here now, we shall be ending transmission media. We shall talk about things like what? Five optic cables, which came recently, and it has also uh, assisted so much. We can talk about things like satellite, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, Bluetooth, uh, coax or cable, twisted pair cable, and why, where do, you, do we use them? Like now in the local area network, what do we prefer there? In wide area network, which one we, we prefer? When you talk about uh, things like ICDN, what happens there? Uh, things like what, uh, uh, using uh, X25 protocol, what happened then now? We have another new technology, they call ATM, a synchronous transfer mode, frame relay, all of those. And also in the introduction of this data communication, we have to understand that why are we transferring data from analog to digital or to modulation? Why would we prefer digital signaling or digital transmission other than what? Analog. Things like what? Security. Because of the encryption techniques which, have, which came in, we can be providing the security here. Things like now what? Digital systems, 
they are what? The size is very small. So once the size is very small, then you realize that in digital communication now, if the size is very small, even the cost will be what? Will be less, and also even it is portable, you can carry it anywhere. That's why we prefer what? Digital signaling. And also, because of uh, the, this, uh, what we call uh, the integration of technology, remember we came from large integration, we came to very large integration, now we are using what? Ultra large integration. Now we, we put all the system together and it becomes with a very small device. So we prefer using what? Digital technology. Things like now TDM, they came in, time division by pressing to assist in transfer of what? Data. So basically why we uh, need to do this topic under data communication is for I want to understand how do I transmit data from here to maybe my home area or I have a, um, I want some service from Japan or from USA. How does the data move, move from here, which I'm, um, if I'm the source, then it goes to all these countries and then it reaches what? The destination. Do I use wired or wireless? What do we prefer? Then again, under this uh, data communication, we shall talk about uh, communication modes again. Let, me, let us talk about again communication modes. There are three also, three communication modes. So let us deal with communication modes. So there are three uh, communication modes. There is one which you call point to point. Point to point. Then number two we have multi point. And then number three we have broadcasts. So let us start with the first one. Talk about point to point. So in point to point is a situation whereby we have either, uh, two devices communicating or directly. What can be in, in, the, in between, which you call intermediate, are repeaters or amplifiers. So now we can have a, a, a station here, let us call it station A or a DTA. You can, you can use any. Then we have another station here. You can, use, you can call it station B. This is now the, maybe the destination. Station B. Now, if uh, depending on the distance, we can have uh, repeaters in between or amplifiers. So these days we use repeaters because I told you that we have one to digital what signaling. So I can have what can be in between the two devices. This we can call them intermediate devices that can be repeaters or amplifiers so why i'm putting the one and then i put some dots it means it might be there depending on the distance or it's not the much because if the distance is just near you don't need a repeater but depending on the distance we can have one or two or three repeaters somebody might be asking what do you mean by a repeater or an amplifier basically in analog moderation we are using amplifiers. And an amplifier is anything which can do what? Raise the incoming signal into the required uh, amount so that it can be received by the either another uh, um, uh, station or the receiver at the other side. But when we are in communication systems that are in data communication, the amplifiers, they create a lot of noise. Why? Because the problem with an amplifier other than in the repeater is an amplifier will raise any signal coming into it. But a repeater, even if there are 10 signals coming into it, is supposed to regenerate. That's what we use in the repeaters. It will regenerate what was transmitted from the station A. For example, if I have about three stations, I have one station here, and then I have an, maybe station B here, and maybe C or D, or there are several. If I have, I have about five stations here, and I'm using an amplifier, and due to crosstalk and other things under noise, some signals from station B and C will be received here. The problem with this amplifier is, this any signal coming in, it will be raised into the required reward amount. Then now, at the receiver, we might get that we have received what signals which are out of uh, uh, whatever was not meant for, for example, if station A was able to produce 10 decibels, 
This one is able to produce 30 dB. And there's another one producing 50 dB. And then I have an amplifier, which uh, remember that I can use what's called voltage multipliers. It's going to be a, a, a triple or a duple. So if I use a triple, which multiplies by a factor of three, then 10 by a factor of three, we may say that at the receiver or as the same B, I'm receiving what? 30 dB. And then yet, the, the one which was meant for to be received is this one, 10 dB. After being amplified, then I receive 30 dB here. Then this one, which is 30 dB from the under station due to crosstalk or in the modulation noise, pass through the amplifier, then it is 90 dB. Whether very get or not, there is a problem. Which problem? I was meant to receive this that, uh, 10 dB, which has been amplified by a, a, a three product to get what? 30 dB. Then there's another signal coming from another station down here, which is station B, which is as 30 dB as the source. At the destination, because I'm using a tripler, I will get what? 90 dB. So the receiver will get this signal of 90 dB instead of what? The one which was having 30 dB at the destination. Hence, now, that's what you could say, that the station B has received unwanted signal or unwanted information. And anything which is not wanted, we call it what? Noise. So amplifiers, they create noise during transmission. But a repeater is supposed to, even if there are about 20 signals here or 10, is supposed to check what it is the source transmits. And then it's supposed to regenerate it, amplify it or raise it, then it will be received. Hence, in digital techniques or in digital communication, we prefer using what? repeaters. Something is a, a, a repeater, basically things like what? Uh, base transmitter stations, or in the normal way, or the layman's language, they call them what? Boosters. So point uh, to point means we have two stations communicating. What can be in between is repeaters or amplifiers. Like now in mobile communication, we can have what? BTS or BSC somewhere, and which you call now the repeaters. Then we have the one mobile here at the source, and another mobile at the destination. In between, we can have several what? Repeaters, or we call boosters, or BTS, or BSC, depending on which one is, uh, which mechanism is going to be used. Now, what about multipoint? So as the name is suggesting, multi means many. So we can have several, uh, uh, it means two or more. It's, so it means it is two and more are communicating. So when we have more than two devices communicating in between, is what you call what? Multi points. I want to draw the diagram of multi points, and then in between the multi point, we can have communication what? Communication nodes. So we can have a, a small local area network here. So this is one. This C is a communication node. We can have a, a, a terminal here. Another terminal here. Then again, we can have another one here. So T, T1, T2, T3. We ring them. We can call this one T1, T2, and you can have several. So T, basically T means a terminal, or a, a DT, or a station, a source. Then C is a communication node. Communication node. So, now, we have maybe terminal one here, which is to communicate to another terminal somewhere. So this basically is a small local area network somewhere. We can have another small local area network somewhere, someplace. So as you can see, I have several terminals which wish to communicate between each other. So from here now, I can have terminal one, communicate to terminal two here in another side or, or in the other local area network. So in multi point, we say it's where we have more than two devices communicating to each other. Now, there's what called, I've called a communication node. A communication node basically, its main function is to receive and forward the message which was sent from the source to the destination. So things like switches or hubs, we can uh, refer them as communication, no? communication nodes. Then the last one is broadcasts. So in the broadcast, what we say is, is a mechanism or is a communication mode whereby we have data being transferred to all the devices or stations in the network except the source. So if we have about 
20 devices here and the source is one, the 19 devices will receive the same same message, but the source will not receive because it is one, which was what? Which was the genesis of the data being tra transmitted. So in, we say that in the broadcast, is a mechanism, it's a communication mode in which by we transfer all the data to all the devices in the network except the source. Practically, we can say that this one is what they call the radio core. Because the radio core will be received in all the units in the military except what? Except the one which was the source of data. So we have these three. So depending on the mechanism, you might realize that most, uh, most communication we use what? Multi point, uh, point to point, and they may, may be in the military, they prefer what? Broadcast scenes or the other station can do what? Can receive the same, same message which was meant for them. And uh, when you want to talk about uh, routing, because now we, this is the start of the interaction part of it, we might realize that we are going to receive the same message several times in different what destinations. So we shall see also the mechanisms which you can you put in place so that we ensure that the same message which has been received cannot be duplicated in the receiver side. Now basically now that's what, uh, our introduction to data communication. So once we shall be through the introduction now we have understood what happens in data communication. So we shall go in so that we talk about Things that like transmission media, the way I've, uh, I've told you, how do we encrypt this data? How do we encode? How do we change this into zeros and ones? The encoding schemes, uh, schemes which you use, things like Manchester, differential Manchester, unipolar and return to zero, and uh, return to zero inverted, all of those, Pipora Army, and also the, the, the identity Pipora Tree. We shall talk about the encoding schemes. Once we are done with the encoding schemes, then, obvious, because we can do uh, of the rest, uh, the band which we don't have, which is not enough, so we do what we call what multiplexing. A multiplexer will come in, and then we can see, we can see the mechanisms which you use in what multiplexing things like what frequency division multiplexing, time division multiplexing. Now we talk about GSM things like GSM, GPRS. What happens there? Then we have another one they call cord, which came recent cord division multiplexing. Then also, which has brought in what you call what uh, WCDM or wide code division what wide band code division multiplexing. So we shall see what happens in multiplexing techniques again. Once we are through with that one, we know that we cannot communicate if we don't have things like what switches and routers. So if we go to the routing protocols, which you use the, uh, things like what uh, in a uh, routing protocols, we see the routing table types of routing the techniques which you use. Obvious, after talking about routing protocols, we can't talk about routing without talking about what IP addressing. So that now we see that the classes of IP addressing, things like class A, class B, class C, and why we, do we prefer using what class C other than A and B in what? Giving the, the, the stations or the computers or the subscribers. Why do we give them class C? So we shall see all of those. Then from there, we shall talk about moderation. How are we transferring this information from here up to the destination? Which techniques I want to use? Is it analog moderation? Is it the digital moderation? What do we mean by what things like quadrature, amplitude moderation? Things like what? Phase shift keying, amplitude shift, uh, 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 shift keying, and then we have also QPSK. How do we apply them and what is the importance of each? We shall see that one. And also we should do a lot of calculations here so that we see that the signals are propagating what is being required from, from us. Then from there also, we should talk things about what? Uh, now we should go down and do practically the structured cabling. How does one do the local network, the topology which are required, the ring topology, the star topology, and also the mesh, even we have the tree and also the hybrid, which now we can integrate the ring, star, and mesh together. So we shall see all of those uh, under the ne uh, now networks. Once we have done those networks again, also if we shall see, can see even under networking where the new token just come in, I talked about frame relay, I talked about ATM, we have been having what called ICDN, integrated service what the digital network, all of those we shall be seeing them, then from there, basically we shall be covering now data communication. It is uh, an area which is very enticing and which is very encouraging because practically is what is being done in all 
organizations. Be it even when people are fighting, they have to use this data communication. Also, we shall talk about what we call the, the under ITU, the open system in the connection, the layers under a open system in the connection, and also we shall compare the OSI and the TCP stroke IP protocol. So we shall see which one came first, who copied from the other one, and now which one is being used and why is being used now? Why do we use OSI in most countries, not what TCP stroke R IP protocol? Thank you for now. As uh, in the next lesson, uh, the lesson when we shall meet, I will go to transmission media. Thanks.